Hi! In this video, you will learn about the UI view, probably the most important component in the UI system. Let's go! In order to create a UI view, you go to the IR key, right click, Dozy, UI, UI view, and a UI view will be automatically created. Of course, if a master canvas does not exist, one will be created as well as its parent. For this particular example, I'm going to set the canvas to screen space camera and set the main camera as the render camera. It works with any <clears throat> render mode, but for this example, I'm going to use the screen space camera mode. So think of the UI view as a container that can uh, hold buttons, toggles, images, and whatever you want to put inside of it, layouts, and so on, scroll views that you can animate in and out of view. So you can show and you can hide. Here you have some buttons. This is for uh, the settings uh, tab in the control panel for the UI view. And these are default settings that uh, every newly created UI view will have. You will have some settings that you can uh, set, not all of them, but uh, yeah, it should uh, help you with your workflow should you need them. Here is a link to the manual and uh, it's, uh, it will take you directly to the website, to the page where the UI view is described. And here is a link to this YouTube video. Of course, there is a debug mode, like uh, every other component in the UI system that will print relevant uh, debug messages to the console. And the UI view, in order to be identified, we use a category and name pair. Right now we have two categories, example and general. And here are the UI views that you will uh, you will find uh, when uh, you will browse our example scenes. And this is the general category that is empty. If you want to create a new UI view, you just open the database and you can add it here. But I'm going to show you by adding a new category and say my category. So I just created a new category and let's add some items. Let's say main menu. Let's add one more settings, settings menu and quit menu. And I can close this and you will notice that now we have a new category, my category with those three view names. You can also add a view name by setting the custom category and you say my custom menu and then you select the category you want to, where you want to put it, let's say my category. And now you'll notice that you have a new custom menu. You can also sort it and that's it. Uh, you have an option to rename the game object to the view name. So in this case, we'll be view minus custom menu. So notice the name, I'm going to click it and I just change it. This is how so you can uh, better order your hierarchy and identify your views. Uh, I'm going to say this is my main menu and I'm going to rename it. And now we have a behavior at start. What should this uh, UI view do? It can do nothing. It can get automatically hidden or it can play its show animation. Always use a, star, a custom start position for um, this coordinate so that it snaps here wherever it is. When you have several views, you might want to not have them stacked. So you want to have them like this. One, two, three. Where is the third one? Like this. And when you press, uh, when you press play, because they have a custom start position, they will all come back here in their original place. And that's it. Now, let's uh, add a show animation and a high animation and show you how it works. I'm going to say a move in and I'm going to say a move out. And that's it. Now we can uh, see how it animates. When you enter play mode, two new buttons will be available, show and hide. And these are for preview purposes only. So you can hide and you can show. If you want to move to the top left, let's say, hide and show. So you have move from in the show um, view option and move to. You can also preview the animations in, in the editor and you just say preview animation and of course the hide animation. Let's say you want to use one of our presets. Select the preset, load it and preview it. Again, you can do the same thing with the hide. So let's select the preset, organic, whatever. And now this is the hide animation. Yeah. Another way to use the presets, you just preview the preset and then you say 
reset animation and load select reset at runtime again for this one. And now when I enter play mode, you'll see that the settings will get loaded because it will load this preset. And you also know that you have a preset because it is written right here in the inspector. And notice that we have animations enabled. So let's hide and let's show. Okay, let me change the UI view so it's not uh, full screen. So it's easier to, to see. So I'm gonna make it center and let's say 512 by 512. And now let's, uh, let's see the animation and everything. Yeah, so hide and show. You can also add at start or at finish. You have a lot of options. You can set the uh, sound, play a particle system, trigger one or more animators, send game events or trigger Unity events. When the show, show view starts and the show view animation starts and finishes and when the hide view starts and finishes. And let me show you. Let's add a sound when we show the view. So let's say a slide. Let's select something a bit easier. So pop up. When we show the view and when you hide the view, let's start slides and let's say pop down. And now we just added sound to our uh, UI view. Hide. Maybe a switch sound would be more appropriate for this. So I'm going to change it. Let's see if we have one. So smooth. Okay. And for the hide, let's say a different sound. Maybe. Okay. So let's test it out. Notice the icons here. They tell me that I have a sound. There you go. You can also change the animations. You can do a lot of things with, uh, with this. You can create a new preset, load any of the available presets, and you have a lot of presets available. So let's load it. Let's see it. And uh, yeah, you can also change the animation. So for example, I just loaded the preset and okay, I saw the animation and I do not want it to drop. I want it to go up. So move from top. I'm going to say move from bottom. And that's it. I just changed the animation. Let's say I want to move from left. Let's uh, customize it. Now, let's say I want it to move a bit slower. So you can do quite a lot of things. There you go. And now I want to move to the right. So this was what animation there is, drop and grow. So I'm going to look for it here in the scale department. So scale, drop, drop and hit. Let's see it. So let's say I want it to go to the, I do not want it to scale. And now to go to the right side of the screen. So right. Okay. So now let's test it. So I just changed the animation in a few seconds. Yeah. So let's go hide and show. All right. So uh, you have UI actions at start and at finish that can trigger sounds, effects, effects. I mean, particle system animators. And this is an animator, native animator. Send game events and Unity events. Also notice the icon system. So if I look here, okay, I have a show animation that has a move and a scale. And I'm also playing a sound. And at hide view, I have a move animation and a fade. And I'm also playing a sound. If I'm sending a game event, let's say one to three. Notice that this icon lit up and now I have here something that singles that I have a game that this UI view, when it gets hidden, it sends a game event and you can track it down and see, okay, where is it? It's here because I know, I know the icon is lit up. The view loop is an animation that is played after the, the UI view has been shown and before it is hidden. Now let's uh, select a flip. Let's load it and let's see it. Hmm, maybe something a bit. Let's go something like that. So it's a bit obvious. It's a bit crazy, but okay. So what does this do? Well, when uh, you start the game at runtime, if it is shown, it will uh, play this animation. So hide, show, and it starts the animation. You can also change it. So let me load another animation. Let's say organic, drop and slow, load, and let's hide it. And now you'll see another animation. There you go. So you can change that depending on what your use case is. Let's reset it. And that's it. Auto hard after show 
Or you can say uh, if you if you have a tooltip or something that uh, the user should not interact with, you can uh, say, okay, after three seconds, you should get automatically hidden. So I'm going to play the show animation at start. And after three seconds, you'll see that it will disappear. Actually, it will play the hide animation. So one, two, three, and it's out. Again, I'm going to play the show. One, two, three, and it's out. Another thing, if you, uh, it contains uh, some uh, buttons, you can uh, deselect any other buttons. If you're using controllers and not a pointer, you may want to automatically select the button after show. And you just drag and drop a, uh, let me create a UI button. So here you just, if I, if I press play, actually, let me do this. Okay. And now this button will automatically be um, selected when this UI view is shown. And if I press space, it will react because it is selected. When this UI view is uh, is hidden, it will get automatically disabled. The game object will get disabled. Its canvas will get disabled and its graphic ray caster will get disabled. So let's press play. And notice that the game object will get disabled, the canvas and the graphic ray caster. So let's hide and they all got disabled. If you have a script and you're interested in not to get disabled, you can just disable this option. So now when this UI view will get hidden, the game object will not get disabled because I disabled this option. So hide. Notice only the canvas and graphic raycaster have been disabled. We do this in order to lower the draw calls and uh, it is very good practice to, to have it hidden. So let me show you show. Hide. Actually, uh, you have it invisible because we have a fade animation. Let, let's disable that. And check it out. Show. Hide. Let's disable this. So, as you can see, it is here. And by default, we disable the canvas, graphic orchestra, and the game object so that it is lighter on the system at runtime. Yeah, that's it. Okay, for the progressor show and hide options, uh, we will have a separate tutorial because this is an advanced feature. It allows for very complex animations and we're not getting into this in this introductory video. Okay, so this is it for the UI view. In other tutorials, you will learn how to use it in complex interactions. Thank you.